Hello, boys and girls. This is Grandpa Bruges again with another great story written by my good friend Lou and beautifully illustrated by Stephanie. The story goes about Christopher. And Christopher is a young field mouse who lives in a barn with his mother, his father and his sisters. Oh, he's a curious little mouse and wants to find out about the big world outside the barn. But most of all, Christopher wants to find out what it means to be kind. So he sets out on numerous adventures to figure out the meaning of kindness, meeting many a creature along the way. Follow along as Christopher explores his world to find out just what it means to be kind and receive kindness in return. Are you ready? Okay, so here we go. Once there was a family of mice that lived in Farmer Bill's barn. There was Mother Mouse, Father Mouse and four little mice children. During the daytime they hid under large bales of hay and in cow stalls. They dared not move when Farmer Bill was in the barn because he did not like mice. Those mice eat our corn, Farmer Bill would say. They take away food from our animals. I don't like them. I just want to get rid of them. So one morning, Farmer Bill scooped up a handful of corn kernels and brought them into his house. He dipped the kernels in some bad water and took them into the barn and spread them around. That night, Father Mouse came out from under a hay bale and tasted the corn that Farmer Bill had left. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Father Mouse became very sick. He lay down on his back and closed his eyes. Don't eat that corn, he told his family. And in a very soft voice, he said to Mother Mouse, I must hide until I get better. But you need to take the children to the garden to find food. Mother Mouse was frightened because the garden was outside and she knew it could be dangerous. Still, she told the children, We can't eat the corn. It made your father sick. We need to go out to the garden and find something to eat. But you must follow me and not say a word. There are many dangers outside. So Mother Mouse quietly left the barn. And Big Sis, Middle Sis and Little Sis and Christopher followed her into the light of a sunny day. The mouse family looked around and they saw the sun shining and they saw the green meadow and the tall trees. They saw pretty flowers and thick bushes. They heard birds chirping. They heard cows lowing. They heard the pigs oinking. <coughs> and they heard a snake hissing in the grass. A snake! Run, children, run, follow me. Big sis, middle sis and little sis scurried after their mother. Christopher started to run, but then he tripped on a wire. And the wire was part of a trap to catch rabbits that were eating carrots in Farmer's Bill Garden. But this time, the trap had caught Christopher instead of a rabbit. Christopher's little heart beat so fast that he thought it would run away from his body. He tried to gnaw his way out of the trap, but he couldn't do it. He heard the slithering of the snake coming near. He closed his eyes and said to himself, Oh, mother, please help me. The snake was a green garter snake. He was little, and he slithered up to Christopher and said, Oh, boy, am I tired. And I'm hungry too. Christopher opened his eyes. He opened them even wider when he looked at the snake. 
He started making little chirping sounds. He was frightened. P please, please don't eat me, snake. Oh, eat you? Well, oh, yes, maybe I could eat you. But I can't eat you now because I have a twig stuck on my fang. It's a problem. Christopher said, well, if I remove the twig, will you promise not to eat me? Oh, snakes don't make promises, you see. But maybe I could find another mouse to eat. So, okay, get this twig off my fang and I won't eat you today. Christopher did as he was asked. The snake gave him a hiss and then slithered back into the grass. Christopher was still caught in the trap. Luckily, Big Sis had been looking for him, and she found him and quickly undid the trap. Christopher was free. Follow me, you silly little boy, Big Sis said as they ran back to the barn. Christopher saw his mother. Mother, mother, the snake was kind to me. He didn't eat me. Hmm. I wonder why, Mother Mouse said as she kissed Christopher's head. Well, I pulled the twig off his fang, so he didn't eat me. He was kind. That's not kindness, Christopher. That's just striking a bargain. You did something for him, so he did something for you. Kindness is different. What is kindness then? asked Christopher. Well, it's not so easy to explain, but it's easy to feel. It's when a person is warm to you, thoughtful of your needs, Mother Mouse answered. But she didn't continue, for just at that moment, Farmer Bill entered the barn. The mouse family scattered into Bess the cow's stall. They tried to hide under the shadow of Bess's stomach, but there wasn't room enough and Christopher's little tail stuck out. Farmer Bill came over to rub Bess's head. You're a good old girl, Bess. We'll never make a hamburger out of you. Why? You're almost part of our family. Bess lowed and brushed her broad head against Farmer Bill's rough hand. She had an itch near her ear. She moved her head so Farmer Bill could scratch her itch. And she lowed again. Mother, Christopher whispered as his mother tried to tuck his tail under some hay. Is Farmer Bill kind to Bess? Hush now, Christopher. This is no time to talk, his mother replied. Well, I'm still hungry, Christopher said. Now, to a human, mouse talk sounds like a lot of little squeaks. And that is what Farmer Bill heard as he scratched Bess's ear. Why, Bess? I believe you have some visitors in your stall. I hear a mouse squeaking. And in fact, I see a tail. Farmer Bill stopped scratching Bess's ear and tried to open the gate to her stall. But just then, Bess decided to lie down. And as she did so, the mouse family ran behind her tail. Farmer Bill couldn't get into the stall because Bess was blocking the entrance with her body. Oh, well, don't worry, Bess. I'll just put out some more of my special corn for those mice. That will get rid of them. And with that, he walked out of the barn. Now, Right by Bess's tail, the mouse family discovered a pile of corn kernels. <sniffs> Mother Mouse smelled them and declared them safe to eat. So as they were eating, Christopher looked at his mother. Bess was kind to us, wasn't she, Mother? Oh, Christopher, will you be quiet and eat? We're lucky that Bess wanted to lie down, or else Farmer Bill might have caught us. Isn't luck kind, mother? No, 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 no. Luck is just... Well, 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 luck is when things happen just right for you. 
but you had nothing to do with them happening. Oh, Christopher, why do you ask me these questions? Can't, can't you just, I don't know, my son, I don't know. Sorry, mother, said Christopher, as he put his tail between his legs and his ears flopped down. I'm not mad, Christopher. It's just hard to explain to you. Mother Mouse kissed him and his ears perked right back up. The next day, Christopher left the barn alone. He remembered that the garden where they had met the gardener snake was full of vegetables. Christopher entered the garden and saw the top of a big orange carrot sticking out of the earth. Oh boy, a carrot! I've always wanted to eat a carrot and this will be my first one. And with that, Christopher began to push away at the dirt covering the rest of the carrot. He was so excited that he didn't see the little green garden snake slither up behind him. Hello again, said the snake. This time I will eat you, little mouse, because I am very hungry. Christopher was frozen with fear. He began to squeak. Just then, a large hand came down and scooped up the snake. Another large hand came down and scooped up Christopher. Those hands belonged to Katie, Farmer Bill's daughter. Run along now, little snake. You won't be eating this mouse, she said, as she released the snake into the garden once more. Hello, little mouse. How are you doing today? It's a lovely day, but I have no one to play with. Won't you play with me? And play they did, the whole day. When it was time for dinner, Katie said, Little mouse, I'll keep you in this box, then I can play with you whenever I want. Katie was just a little girl. She didn't know that a mouse can't live in a box without food or water. So Christopher became frightened when Katie put the lid on the box and said, Good night, little mouse. Christopher couldn't see much. It was dark inside the box. He felt for the sides of the box and began to gnaw away at the cardboard. And when he had made a hole as big as his head, he squeezed out of the box and scurried back to his family in the barn. Mother, mother, I, I had a great adventure. I, I ate a carrot. I saw the snake again and he wanted to eat me. But the girl saved me. Oh, she wanted to play with me. She, she was kind, mother. But then she put me in a box so we could play again tomorrow. But I got scared and I escaped. Oh, Christopher, I was worried about you. And the little girl saved you from the snake because she felt lonely and wanted to play with you. She wasn't being kind. She just wanted something from you. Then when are people kind, mother? The little girl saved my life. That was kind. No. It was just something she did so she could have you to play with. Christopher looked down at the ground. Oh, I guess I'll never know what it means to be kind. And as he said this, he noticed a small cricket tangled in a spider's web. Christopher went over to the cricket and freed it from the web. You're okay now, little one. Christopher said. The cricket chirped and hopped away. Oh, Christopher, you really are a kind boy. Am I, mother? he asked. Yes, you are, she replied. And Christopher, he smiled a smile as big as the sun. <laughs>